You may toss them a crumb, then pass them by, never suspecting these common street birds capable of greater glory. But in the annals of avian history, no bird can rival the pigeon for courage under fire, devotion to duty, and service to humanity. All common pigeons have the ability to home, and in the great conflicts of the 20th century, homing pigeons became full-fledged war heroes. Thousands of homers campaigned in World Wars I and II. They advanced across Europe, North Africa, and Asia. An air force of messengers braving heavy artillery to file their reports. By the fortunes of war, a few achieved greatness. The foremost of these was G.I. Joe. It was 1943. The British 56th Infantry Division had met the Germans at a heavily fortified Italian village. They requested air support. On the morning of October 18th, Allied planes were warming up for takeoff when G.I. Joe came through with a message. The town had been captured and was in British hands. The bombing run was aborted just in time. Joe was officially credited with saving a thousand Allied soldiers' lives. He was presented the distinguished Dickin Medal, the animal equivalent of the Victoria Cross. The amazing abilities of homing pigeons remain a mystery. Scientists believe they possess a solar compass in combination with geomagnetic sensors. They may even use scent to navigate. There's considerable controversy on how pigeons actually home. There's something about the bird that allows them to detect the magnetic fields of the Earth. There's obviously other cues they also use. Dave Coslow knows what he's talking about. He's employing pigeons every day in his rafting company, Rocky Mountain Adventures, in Fort Collins, Colorado. As rafters ride down the Cache Lapuda River, Megan Apfel shoots the action for Rocky Mountain Adventures. This gives customers a way to relive their run through the rapids. Now to get the film back for processing in time for the rafters to see their photos. It's 25 miles back to town over twisting mountain roads, and Megan must get set for the next rafters already heading downstream. The answer? Pigeon film couriers. Good bird. Megan loads a roll of film into a stretchy lycra backpack, and the pigeon is up and away. Coslo calls it the Pigeon Express. And to carry his cargo, he uses birds specially bred for homing. But even the best required initial coaching. Training flights began at the end of the day, taking advantage of the bird's instinct to roost. Short flights were increased 50 yards at a time as the birds progressed. When they were able to fly faster than we could drive home, we added more mileage until they were flying the distances we want them to quite successfully. As a pigeon returns to the loft, it enters through a gate, setting off an electronic signal. This alerts the staff that film has arrived. The Pigeon Express has been operating for over five years. Some of the company's pigeons are third generation photo couriers. Coslo has lost one bird, dubbed Amelia Earhart, a casualty he fears of hawks. We've done better getting the film back on time with the pigeons than we have with any other method we've considered. And it's also been a more fun approach to trying to get the film back. 
So gang, we've got the photo machine downstairs, so if you like anything, we can shrink it, we can enlarge it, we can do anything you want there's, to. There's, there's us right there, isn't it? The rafters are duly impressed. There we go. That's us. That's a good one. For the Pigeon Express, business is booming. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. It's By the time you get back here, the pictures are already done. They work for They work for Bertsy. They earn their wings. <laughs> In the communications revolution of the 21st century, not everything is wireless and digital. Out here in what's left of the wild, pigeons still deliver. As evening approaches, a bird stands guard over the sugarcane fields of South Florida. He's been waiting for nightfall when sugarcane poachers begin their work. Rats. Rats devour some $30 million worth of sugarcane each year. It's the barn owl's job to stop them. The faint rustlings are loud and clear to the waiting owl. Its disc-shaped face helps direct sound to its sharp ears. And even in the dark of night, it can see a rat move. It's not much of a contest, for barn owls are members of one of the bird world's most extraordinary families. Unlike other birds, owls are designed for darkness. When most birds have gone to roost, owls are on the prowl. There are more than 130 kinds, and they have colonized every habitat. Their soft, downy feathers and large, appealing faces are merely a disguise. For all owls are predators, swift and silent killers in the night. The skills of owls have mostly gone unnoticed in Belle Glade, Florida. Owls have long been part of this agricultural landscape as traditional on the farm as a barnyard cat. Dr. Richard Raid of the University of Florida explores one of their typical homes. This building that we're in is barn owl heaven. The barn owls have kind of taken up residence here and at any one time you might find three to four nests of nesting barn owls uh, in this particular structure. The dried out remains of a meal prove his point. But unused buildings such as this are becoming harder for barn owls to find. And also some of the urbanization is taking down some of the trees surrounding the agricultural area and so even natural nesting sites are going um, and being built on. To most people here it was good riddance. Not many appreciated what barn owls can do. But Wayne Boynton was different. I noticed a loss of habitat for the native indigenous barn owls, so I thought of a way to try to increase the number of barn owls in our area. I designed and built nesting boxes for them and placed them all over the farm. Like other growers here, Boynton was spending thousands of dollars a year fighting the rat problem with poison. The rats were winning the war. He thought barn owls could help. Checking in on the chicks, Boynton knows that each one of these fluffy little babies will soon be eating 1,500 rats a year. He's the godfather of a reborn rat patrol. 
Many people doubted whether if we built barn owl nesting boxes that the owls would actually use them. But I have found that as in the movie Field of Dreams, build them and they will come. I have nearly 25 nesting boxes scattered throughout the 3,000 acres of our farm and 100% of them are occupied. Moyton's success is turning things around for barn owls in the sugarcane town of Belle Glade. What do barn owls like to eat? Does anybody oh. know? Yes. Rats, voles, rats, and rodents. And rats, voles, and rodents. That's right. Does anybody know what we call this? Yes. An owl pellet? An owl pellet. That's exactly right. And Richard Raid is directing a fifth grade science project. They're dissecting owl pellets, the regurgitated remains of the owl's prey to see for themselves exactly what owls feast on. Has anybody found any skulls in theirs? Oh, excellent. I see two skulls in the same pellet. These fifth graders are constructing their very own rat skeletons. Six rodents. I mean, I'm not sure what this is. What the heck is that? A hip bone, a pelvic bone, that's right. What Richard Raid is building is a newfound respect for barn owls and the protection they provide to the fields of Belle Glade as they set out to hunt each night. The ground squirrels aren't the only ones on Olcon with problems. Around 100,000 Baikal seals live on the lake, which may soon be an unsustainable figure. Hundreds crowd onto rocks around the island. They shiver involuntarily to keep warm and seek rocks for sunbathing. But space is tight. The lucky ones squeeze in, though that doesn't necessarily guarantee a warm reception. frustration of one soon spreads. With few natural enemies, the seals apparently like to pick on each other. on a hot rock beats being on the outside trying to get in. This exclusive resort isn't accepting new guests. Come evening, a cool mist hangs over the lake as the last of the egg-laying caddisflies get picked off by ducks and bears. <laughs> 